Hello, and welcome to The Ink Refinery, a mini-series of videos where I present my ideas for Splatoon 3 that iterate on concepts already seen in Splatoon 2. A lot of people are presenting crazy new ideas for Splatoon 3, but we have to remember that games in a series are iterative, and this video series aims to provide some ideas in that regard. In this episode, I'll be presenting fundamental weapon changes that I want to see in the next game. We know that existing weapons will be returning to Splatoon 3, and I want to see them changed up a little bit. These are ideas that can't just easily be patched into Splatoon 2, ideas that fundamentally change how a weapon is designed and played. We aren't just buffing strafe speed or turf output here, we're adding completely new features to some weapons. This episode also features a special guest. Hello everyone, this is Chara, I'm another Splatoon content creator, and today I want to help go over some of my own ideas along with Ollie for this amazing series. So without further ado, let's get into it. Let's start out with the weapon that needs it the most, the Goo Tuber. Now, I love the Goo Tuber in concept, and the idea of storing a charge is a really good idea for a charger in general. However, its Splatling counterpart, the Nautilus, has a huge advantage over the Goo Tuber in that it can paint a path ahead of its itself and quickly move forward with that path. I'm proposing that GooTuber gets a way to do that as well by giving it a second charge. The reticle in the center of the screen would have two circles, each filling up as you charge. Charge time would still be normal for each circle, so to fill up both, you'd have to charge for twice as long. However, when you release the ZR button, it releases only the ink in the outermost circle, effectively storing another charge. This means you can shoot a shot ahead of you, swim forward, and tap the ZR button to get another full charger shot. This would make GooTuber not only more mobile in terms of combat, but it would develop its own niche as having the highest DPS in the game, since you can output two full charger shots in a fraction of a second. I'm not sure if this would make GooTuber more viable, but it would make it a heck of a lot more fun to play. Blasters currently are in a really rough spot in Splatoon 2 due to their lack of turfing capabilities and how fast enemies can move and recover health. If you ask any blaster veteran from Splatoon 1 what they want for a blaster change, most of us would say to remove jump RNG. We've already seen this change made to splash matic and it would allow blaster players to be much more aggressive with their shots due to the added mobility. Plus, being able to jump and not have your shots go 50 degrees into a wall would be a really nice change, and it's currently the most frustrating thing about playing the weapon. Giving it more options for kill power and spacing via jumping is a great way to make the class much more viable. The Flingzer Roller should be the ultimate versatile roller. It's gone underutilized in that regard, and I say give it a third type of flick. When the roller is using a vertical flick, if it taps the ZR button twice in quick succession, it flings ink at an even further range with less ink covering the ground, reaching to about the range of a splatter scope. The Flingzer Roller's three flicks should each focus on killing, turfing, and movement, so by making the horizontal horizontal flick cover more ground, the mid-range flick able to kill anyone from a decent distance, and the long-range flick act as a good runaway option, the Flingzer Roller would become the ultimate catch-all weapon. In our opinion, Sloshers have felt like a simple weapon class. Their gameplay depth is really about getting fall-off or arcing your shots in unique angles. However, Sloshers don't really have much versatility for the main three in terms of playstyle. Our idea is by holding ZR after a Slosh, Sloshers can take some time to scoop up ink, making their next Slosh wider and longer range at the cost of more ink consumption. This would greatly increase the turf output of the slosher and would not increase the hitbox size, giving it a way to turf and trap people. This could add a lot more depth to it and allow it to play more supportively, which is an option sloshers don't really have right now, which should help give more choices without improving the combat drastically to make it too strong. The Blah Blah is one of the most hated weapons in Splatoon right now. We have a couple of ideas for how to make it less annoying to fight and more engaging to play. Firstly, it should have a better wide turfing option, since it can be kind of tough to cover areas in ink without flicking like a madman. I propose that when it jumps, its four bubbles spread out at slight angles and cover the ground individually. This would cover the ground more, but no individual bubble is going to kill anyone that way. It would cause the weapon to be much more nuanced yet chaotic at the same time, tuning into the chaos theme of Splatoon 3 and the Blob Lover itself. One other change we want to see to the Blob Lover is that its ink consumption increases as you fire continuously and decreases when you don't fire the weapon. The size of the blobs being fired will tie to how much ink each blob costs, so they'll grow over time with continuous fire. The Blob Lover's biggest problem is how you can just spam blobs and have it completely dominate an area, which is incredibly annoying to deal with. Finally, we want to see the blobs fired by the blob lover to be destructible. Each one would have 50 HP and would break if shot at enough. This would reduce the blob lover's effectiveness at just standing in one place expecting to turf an area, but it would also increase the blob lover's close range effectiveness since each blob is also blocking incoming shots. These changes to the blob lover would make it more comfortable to use, yet also encourage people playing the weapon to move around, manage their ink, and engage properly with enemies. The last main weapon change is the junior and arrow spray, the kind of spray type weapons. These two weapons are are entirely focused on paint and have very little combat due to the high amount of shots to kill along with their RNG, which means their overall playstyle can be really boring. I want to add to that without taking anything away from it, so I'm thinking of giving it a combat mode similar to Squeezer, where these weapons will have increased accuracy at the cost of painting. This can be done the same way as Squeezer, by tapping the ZR button rapidly or holding the L button as described in the previous video. These first two shots would have perfect accuracy after pressing ZR, weapons with no combat utility end up being some of the most boring to play and play 
play against. So hopefully, this can allow players to have more options to be able to go in without taking anything away from it. Now, one thing we want to see across every weapon is some kind of customizability. For a series that leans so hard into punk and rebellious concepts, there's a surprising lack of individuality when it comes to your weapon's appearance outside of hero kits. We're thinking one of two options. One, define a tricolor set for each weapon and let people customize it. For example, the Slattershot Pro has red, white, and blue, and we think people should be able to change these to whatever colors they want to give more life to the game. Our second idea is just to have weapon skins that people can buy with coins or earn from various challenges with the weapon. Got Type 500? You can can get a weapon skin. Got a certain amount of turf inked, you can get a weapon skin. It would be an easy thing to allow the weapon to better represent a player and would fit perfectly with Splatoon's aesthetic. It would be a great way to set some kind of challenge or DLC system into the game. We also want to see every main weapon have at least one kit at Splatoon 3's launch. The wait for the bamboozler was unbearable in Splatoon 2, and I don't want to repeat that. And I'm sure everyone else with a favorite weapon doesn't want to experience it either. One final thing we want to see is a system that would affect every main weapon, an improved turfing system. Well, Tune is a pretty seamless turfing system, don't get me wrong, but on slopes it's kind of buggy and inconsistent. A charger should be able to shoot in a straight line, and here expect everything underneath where I shot to be covered with ink. The same goes for rollers, blasters, and sloshers. And I'm sure with minor reworks to the ink engine, Nintendo could smooth this out and make the game just a little bit more consistent. Those are our ideas that we have right now regarding complete overhauls to weapons. Actually, one of my ideas I had a while back and I wrote down for this video series is being implemented into Splatoon 3 already, and it's that weapon variants are more visually distinct to separate them. Super glad that's being implemented, as we've seen with the Range Blaster and the 96 Gal. I can only hope that this philosophy spreads to individual weapon kits like Range Blaster and Custom Range Blaster. Anyway, my next episode in the series will be discussing sub-weapons. We can't be sure if the same sub-weapons will return in Splatoon 3, but I'll be operating as if they are. If you want to see more of these ideas, feel free to subscribe to the channel, and if you have any main weapon changes that you want to see in Splatoon 3, share it in the comments. Also, if you aren't subscribed to Char yet, you absolutely should be. He's one of the hardest working people in the Splatoon content scene and his videos do a great job at showing the competitive side of Splatoon community and the discussions within it. The ideas he brought to this video made this video twice as good and I'm so glad he reached out to help work on it. I hope I'll see you next time. Bye bye